So good afternoon to everyone and welcome to all of you on behalf of the ELISA team, particularly the ELISA knowledge transfer team. Today, uh, Lorena Hernandez, uh, project officer, and myself, Simon Vrecher, consultant, both uh, working for GRC of the European Commission, will be hosting uh, this webinar, which is the first one of three webinars of the knowledge transfer pack we have prepared together with our colleagues uh, from Deloitte, uh, describing ELISA at, um, achieving different ob objectives. Uh, so today, uh, the webinar is with the title ELISA Action Support to Policy Initiatives, how to make the best uh, use of location information in the policy lifecycle. Uh, as you can see on the next slide, uh, a bit uh, information on ELISA. So a European location interoperability solution for e-government is uh, what ELISA stands for. And uh, ELISA Action is a part of the ISA Square program, uh, which is a, a European interoperability program aiming at providing cross-border and cross-sector uh, interoperability solutions for public administrations, uh, businesses and citizens. Uh, there are more than uh, 50 different actions uh, under this umbrella program tackling interoperability from different angles, while ELISA is the one, the only one, uh, focusing on the location dimension uh, as a, actually as a driver for enabling the digital uh, government transformation. Since the adoption of the ISA Square program in 2016, ELISA has supporting, supported building uh, a location-enabled digital government which is actually a public administration which actively uses the value and the benefits of the spatial uh, dimensions in its procedures. So the overall concept of ELISA is, is uh, built on the three important ele elements, uh, digital transformation, location in uh, interoperability. For the future, ELISA with all its, uh, with all its um, inputs, uh, good practices and legacy will provide uh, for sure the firm inputs uh, within the Digital Europe program related in improving and enhancing the European interoperability by use of the location data and intelligence. As you can see on the next slide, ELISA aims to break down barriers and promote coherent and consistent approach uh, to the sharing and reuse of location data across sectors and borders. And all these in the context of the digital transformation by supporting different policy initiatives, by providing reusable, interoperable cross-border and cross-sector frameworks and solutions for public administrations, businesses and citizens, by discovering emerging trends and technologies, and last but not least, by building geo-knowledge base to inform um, and train stakeholders and promote the adoption of good practices and innovation in location data. Uh, all this is being done by different, or, or let's say by four types of different outputs, by carrying out studies, by developing a framework of guidelines, recommendations and reusable tools, by developing pilots and applications to test principles in practice, and by uh, um, providing knowledge transfer and capacity building and stakeholder support. This was has been covered uh, or variety of topics actually, as you can see on the on the slide. I won't uh, go into details in this uh, at this point. Uh, but let's uh, maybe just mention some achievements of Elisa of past five past five past years. Uh, which were uh, complemented the EIF and NIFO with an extensive location interoperability framework and state of play of assessments and offering three solutions that are including in the EIF toolbox, helping uh, inspire directive put into practice, uh, build uh, an extensive community of European and international stakeholders, which includes also the active engagement of the ISA Square member states, uh, raising awareness of new approaches uh, and so on and so on. Uh, so, as you can see on the next slide, uh, to achieve all these objectives, um, knowledge transfer uh, play a central role. Knowledge transfer in general is the complex process of disseminating knowledge from one individual team or organization to another one uh, in order uh, to solve problems, foster innovation and so on. On ELISA, this has been done uh, by establishing a mutually beneficial collaborative community with its stakeholders, by creating an interactive environment, enabling co-creation and open innovation, to, uh, and open innovation, and by turning outputs into actionable knowledge. 
Uh, and also today, this webinar is one of the uh, webinars uh, the, under the frame of the release and knowledge transfer. And with us, uh, we have, as you can see on the next slide, this, the, the speaker from Deloitte, senior consultant in public sector, Massimo Pedroli, which will uh, guide us through very interesting topics today. And what's on the table, Massimo, would you please uh, present us? Sure, thank you, Simon. Um, thank you also to all our attendees today. Um, a couple of words on myself. I have been uh, working uh, with uh, Elise for some years now, and it's a pleasure to uh, be with you today to guide you through a view on Elise's contributions on uh, uh, the policy life cycle. Today, uh, we will cover, uh, after a brief overview on the role of ELISE uh, in supporting policy initiatives, uh, topics uh, such as uh, the use of location information in different stages of the policy life cycle. Uh, we will also um, drive you through a series of user journeys uh, seen from a user perspective, how location information uh, can uh, be used in uh, different stages of the policy life cycle. Uh, we will also uh, drive you through an overview of Elise's outcomes uh, to strengthen the role of location in policy support. And we conclude with a uh, uh, number of key messages, uh, challenges, and outlooks on the future uh, perspectives in the use of location information in future initiatives. We will then end with our uh, Q&A session for uh, uh, you to interact with us and uh, raise uh, questions and items for discussion. So uh, the first uh, session uh, of today's webinar is on the role of ELISA action in supporting policy initiatives. I will uh, pass um, the word to uh, Simon for a short quiz to help you get acquainted uh, with the topic uh, we will discuss later on in this session. Yes, indeed. So uh, during the next five sections, at the beginning, we will start a short quiz uh, to a bit check uh, what is your knowledge about the Lisa. Uh, with the first one, we are asking uh, uh, the question, so apart from Inspire, Elisa has dealt with digital single market, vocational education and training, energy efficiency, or energy efficiency, EIF, and general food law, or better regulation, digital single market, sustainable development. So please, you have 15 seconds to for answer the quiz question. Okay. So we can end polling and share the results. So, all of you, better regulation, digital single market, sustainable development. Massimo, what would you say on that answers? Are you happy? I'm very happy. Excellent. Thank you, Simon. It looks like at least those who have answered the um, poll, the questions uh, are familiar with uh, what uh, Elise has dealt with uh, in terms of policy support uh, in the past years. Uh, in fact, as you can see here, um, Elise has uh, provided support uh, to a series of policies. Here we name only the main ones, among which uh, uh, there's a, a digital single market strategy, uh, which uh, seeks to ensure better access for consumers and businesses to online goods and services across Europe. Uh, for example, by removing barriers to cross-border e-commerce and access to online content when increasing um, consumer protection. Uh, to the European Interoperability Framework, or EIF, uh, which gives guidance uh, through a set of recommendations to public administrations on how to improve 
governance of their interoperability activities and establish cross-organizational relationships, streamline processes, supporting end-to-end -end digital services and ensure that existing and new legislation do not compromise interoperability efforts. Another piece of European uh, uh, policies, uh, which is very relevant to Elise, is the Inspired Directive, as uh, most of you may know, uh, which aims to create a European Union spatial data infrastructure for the purposes of EU environmental policies and policies of activities uh, which may have an impact on the environment. As you know, uh, INSPIRE has become um, a reference uh, policy, a reference in general for the use of location information in several other domains uh, beyond the strict environmental domain. Uh, then we have the government action plan uh, with uh, actions and uh, streams uh, uh, such as the setup of a single digital gateway, uh, the uh, interconnection of all business registries and insolvency registers, and the one only principle, namely the principle um, uh, providing for owners of a certain piece of information uh, to provide this uh, piece of information only one, only once and not uh, having to resubmit it uh, to different uh, public administrations, we should be able to reuse the information submitted by the owner uh, only once. Um, another piece of uh, policy, um, uh, European policy relevant uh, to Elise is the better regulation, um, which uh, provides for uh, um, new actions to be based on evidence and uh, for uh, uh, EU laws, legislation in general, to be made simpler and uh, better in general. Also through the involvement of citizens, businesses and stakeholders in the decision-making process. Finally, uh, another relevant piece of uh, uh, European uh, uh, legislation to which Elise has given support is the European data strategy, which aims at creating a single market for data and establishing common European data spaces. So all of these uh, policies have been supported in one way or uh, the other, sometimes in several different ways by Elise. Um, why then do we have this focus on location uh, on uh, the policy uh, side? This is because location data, as you can see here, um, can comprise uh, anything from addresses, buildings, uh, information on buildings, information on road networks, and so on. Um, we can actually say that in general, uh, as you see here, uh, location is all around us, spatial is everywhere, or even in, in a different way, everything happens somewhere. Uh, so you may find location information related to uh, different uh, uh, angles of uh, um, policy making in this case. Um, location data on top of that facilitates data integration and allows taking data-driven decisions uh, based on where and why things happen, as we said, and eases communication through intuitive map representations and enables visualizations of sophisticated models and simulations. This is something that we have particularly seen uh, these days, uh, as you all know, with uh, the need to take policies to address um, complex issues related to health uh, or to uh, economic uh, uh, development based on what's happening in certain areas of the union. 
uh, the European Union in particular. Um, the relationship between uh, uh, location data uh, and other components uh, that we see here um, is represented in a way that uh, drives from location data, uh, which is data with a direct or indirect reference to a specific location or geographical area, which can be better exploited uh, uh, by uh, enabling establishing location interoperability. Location interoperability, in fact, is the ability of organizations, systems, and devices to exchange and make use of location data with a coherent and consistent approach. Uh, the concept of reusing location information is key for location interoperability here. And location interoperability, in its turn, uh, enables location intelligence, uh, which is the process of deriving meaningful insights from geospatial data relationships to solve particular challenges, such as demographic or environmental analysis, asset tracking and traffic planning, for example. As we said before, um, uh, evidence-based uh, uh, policy making is key to uh, improve and make uh, better policies. So this is why location intelligence can support effectively uh, policy making. Uh, here we gave uh, some examples that we have mentioned before. Now let's go to um, a session where we will uh, uh, talk about how location information can be used in the different stages of the policy life cycle. The policy life cycle is a key concept that we will use in this session and in the rest of the presentation today to drive you through uh, uh, the experience that uh, uh, Elisa has gathered so far. Uh, Simon, a uh, quick question for all our participants. Yes, indeed, since, since uh, we will touch the life cycle. So there is another quiz question for you. So which are the four stages of the EU policy life cycle? Is it preparation, adoption, implementation, application? Is it preparation, adoption, implementation, evaluation? Or is it adoption, implementation, application, evaluation? So please take a bit of your time for your answers. Mm -hmm. Maybe another five seconds. Okay, so I'm sharing the results. Most of you have answered the second question. Uh, Massimo, I think there will be some work for you. Yes, it seems so. Um, actually, uh, the right answer is the first one, but uh, there's some merit in what uh, some uh, attendees have responded because uh, there are different concepts of a policy life cycle. What we will uh, use today here is the um, concept of policy life cycle applied in the uh, European institutions that may differ from other concepts. Um, so let's start uh, with an overview of the current state of play on policy alignment. Uh, this information today is taken from the ULF blueprint, which is a key document, uh, guidance document um, produced under the ELISA action, uh, of which we will uh, talk later on. In particular, here we are talking about uh, uh, policy and strategy alignment. And the current state, uh, as uh, represented in the ULF blueprint, is that despite initiatives on strengthening the alignment of policies, location aspects within existing policy and strategic frameworks are not always addressed in a consistent and coherent manner. And uh, in particular, data of suitable quality is not always readily accessible. Uh, 
On the um, positive side, there are some good examples of simple and consistent licensing and access to open data. However, uh, there is still limited uh, or uh, uh, subject to improvement alignment uh, across member states. The vision that the ULF uh, blueprint proposes is a coordinated and aligned policy and strategic approach, approach both nationally and across Europe for the use of location information. This uh, coordinated uh, uh, approach should enable improved and more effective policy making, uh, better integrated and more effective cross-sector and cross-border digital public services, better engagement with businesses and citizens, and reduced costs and increased social and economic benefits. So all of these can be uh, achieved uh, by a consistent approach to the policy life cycle from a location perspective. Uh, what you can see here uh, is the policy life cycle as proposed by the better regulation um, uh, strategy of the European Union. Um, the policy life cycle then is articulated, as you can see, in four stages preparation, adoption, implementation, and application. Uh, with the implementation and application stages supported by ongoing monitoring and evaluation of the effects of a certain policy. Uh, ELISE supports and promotes better regulation goals through a consistent approach, application of location information in all of these four stages as displayed here. Uh, please bear in mind this schema because it will be used as a navigator throughout the presentation to help you locate to which phase of the policy life cycle we are referring to in a certain uh, moment of the presentation. A first example here, uh, the um, preparation phase. Um, Elise has uh, uh, contributed to this phase uh, by considering how location aspects are taken or not taken into account when assessing new policy initiatives. Um, actually, although location information is becoming increasingly relevant, uh, and in many cases of real added value for several European policies, uh, there is uh, still uh, some uh, room for improvement uh, in the way that uh, uh, the uh, location information and uh, its value uh, is not known. Um, Elise has studied an approach for the inclusion of location interoperability in the better regulation ICT assessment method. You can see here a graphical representation of this approach, specifically by proposing the extension of the monitoring process proposed by tool number 27 of the better regulation toolbox, which is a toolbox proposed by um, the European legislation to uh, improve the quality of EU legislation. In the implementation phase, uh, here we have an example uh, provided by uh, Elise uh, that has conducted a series of use case analysis, uh, for example, linked to the energy pilot, uh, which is one of a group of pilots um, deployed by Elise to uh, demonstrate uh, the power of using location information in different specific uh, uh, domains other than uh, uh, the um, environmental domain. Um, the energy pilot aims at um, covering, uh, uh, as well as the other pilots, as much as comprehensively as possible, 
the wide spectrum uh, of energy policies uh, related business processes that can be enabled by location information. The use cases uh, studied in the um, uh, pilot have allowed investigating the possible benefits that the inspired directive can bring to the existing policy frameworks uh, of the energy performance of buildings directive, the energy efficiency directive, and the covenant of mayors initiative. In the application phase, uh, Elise has explored the context in which geospatial data is used for service and product creation across Europe. Um, in particular, um, Elise has identified uh, examples of value chains based on the exchange of location data of the main actors associated with the sharing and reuse of geospatial data, most of all, uh, of the barriers that they're facing uh, when using such data and has provided suggestions to overcome such barriers and exploit the key opportunities, thus uh, helping um, the, and supporting the implementation of the digital single market strategy. Now, uh, let's go to a session presenting some user journeys, as we said before, so some uh, ways of uh, uh, using uh, Elisa's contributions by the perspective of um, some uh, typical uh, uh, stakeholder profiles. Simon? So let's launch another uh, quiz questions. A question for you. So who are, in your opinion, the stakeholders impacted by the usage of the location information for policy making purposes? Uh, is it public administrations and businesses? Is it public administrations and citizens? Or public administration, citizens and businesses? So yes, so 30 seconds, maybe in another five, 10 seconds for your answers. So you are not totally unique in the answers. Quite interesting. So let's close the polling and share the results. So the most of you, the majority of you, uh, answered public administration, citizens, and businesses. Which is Massimo? Which is the right answer? Actually, we will see that uh, there's merit for uh, um, using location information uh, uh, for all of these stakeholder groups. In fact, we have uh, identified uh, some uh, personas uh, representing typical uh, users uh, belonging to the uh, group of uh, public administrations, to the group of uh, uh, businesses, uh, business representatives, and to the group of uh, citizens, uh, the civil society in general. So we have uh, designed uh, a four different user journeys. Uh, the first two uh, related to the um, to representatives of the public uh, administrations, uh, the third uh, to a representative of a private business, and the fourth uh, designed on a citizen. Let's now start with Michelle. Uh, Michelle is a city planner. Uh, she has to assess the energy performance of some buildings in her city. And uh, in order to do this, uh, she needs to gather reliable information. Uh, in uh, uh, his, her um, journey uh, dealing with uh, location information, she understands that uh, she's going to face uh, uh, several challenges and risks uh, the first one being uh, uh, the access or limited access to relevant data, uh, the uh, conditions uh, for data use uh, posed by data privacy uh, legislation and regulations, and uh, the decision, the choice uh, to uh, define a certain and most appropriate methodology for the analysis. 
um, Elise per se um, cannot make, uh, cannot help city planners in making data available, uh, but what it can do is suggesting a way to make uh, possible that data are better available for uh, um, stakeholders such as Michelle. Um, so, for example, um, the ELISA guidance in this case, um, which can be taken from the sources indicated on uh, the left bottom side of the screen, is the possible adoption of common uh, structure data models, extending some Spire core data models, for example. Uh, the reuse of parts or whole data sets for different planning, implementation, monitoring and reporting purposes. Uh, the need to establish uh, data access agreements to use the relevant data. This is a key uh, recommendation uh, to uh, make sure that uh, appropriate uh, and necessary data are available for analysis, uh, such as the ones that Michelle needs to do. Uh, and uh, the development of uh, uh, and application of relevant uh, uh, methodologies and models to fill data gaps. And finally, uh, the need to apply data minimization uh, techniques in order to uh, be compliant uh, with uh, data privacy regulations. Another example of a stakeholder in uh, public administrations uh, is Alex, as represented here. Uh, Alex is a European policymaker uh, who has to draft a new policy that may involve the use of location information. Um, as uh, uh, a European policymaker, he knows that uh, uh, he can make good use of the better regulation toolbox to um, design uh, policies uh, based on evidence and uh, improve the policy making process. However, uh, he sees that uh, um, he, he may not have a structured approach even uh, when using the better regulation toolbox to deal with location information. Uh, the challenges area and risks he faces are the lack of indicators to assess the role of the spatial information in the better regulation toolbox, as we said, uh, and possibly the lack of spatial literacy, uh, for example, um, when facing issues in identifying the different types of location information uh, and how they are linked. Uh, the ELISA guidance uh, in this case, also um, proposed uh, in the different documents um, identified in the bottom left part of the slide here are the use of indicators uh, from the LIFO, which is an observatory on location interoperability of which we will uh, further uh, talk later on, to assess the role of geospatial information in policymaking uh, nationally uh, and European-wide. The inclusion of references to location information, data, and uh, other location relevant policies uh, that can be used as a criterion to identify uh, if a certain policy that uh, a certain uh, policymaker, such as Alice, Alex, is designing, uh, can be actually considered themselves location relevant and uh, uh, thus adapt accordingly the policy drafting process. If the uh, uh, policy is confirmed as relevant from a location perspective, um, Alex may want to involve uh, staff expert in geospatial matters in the policy drafting uh, process. Um, he may also define checkpoints and basic questions in the policy drafting process to understand if and how location information may be relevant to draft a certain policy. This is an approach uh, particularly uh, 
proposed in uh, uh, the um, uh, design uh, process uh, complementing uh, the uh, um, better regulation toolbox uh, that uh, Elise has proposed. Then uh, let's take in consideration Michael as a new business entrepreneur. Um, he wants to offer an app developed and managed by a third party to plan trips and get, get updates on bus status using GPS. He plans to add a new functionality, uh, which is the integration with social media uh, to save personal information and favorite trips across all users connected devices. Uh, he understands that uh, the trust by end users is key for his business and uh, um, he understands that the implementation of this uh, integration with social media uh, may be a subject uh, to a privacy risk assessment. Elise guidance uh, in this case uh, contained, uh, for example, in documents such as the ULF blueprint and the guidelines uh, for uh, public administrations on location privacy, is uh, to uh, ask, first of all, permission uh, for data collection to users and uh, be as simple as possible in uh, um, demonstrating use of location information to users, um, applying data protection by design and default. Uh, so since the uh, design phase of his uh, application, uh, publishing a privacy notice uh, to uh, make users aware of the use done of their uh, personal location information. Um, and uh, conduct a specific privacy risk assessment for the connection to social media, uh, limiting the purpose of use of social media information. Finally, uh, Lucy, a citizen. Um, Lucy uh, wants to join a community of mappers who contributes and maintains data about roads, trails, cafes, and railway stations throughout Europe, and at the same time use the service herself when traveling. And the challenges and risks she faces is the uh, upload of wrong data by a member of the community, which may lead to inefficient use of the community service, uh, the inappropriate use of personal location data, uh, which also includes the use out of the scope of uh, the community and the transfer of such personal location data to third parties and possibly spamming uh, by participants to the community uh, or by people connected to them. Uh, the ELISA guidance in this domain uh, is uh, somehow similar to what we've seen uh, with the previous uh, stakeholder um, a key recommendation is to ask permission for data collection and to uh, clarify what use will be done uh, of the data collected uh, in this context. Uh, using uh, uh, clear guidelines in uh, uh, applying uh, the measures uh, uh, to protect the data uh, provided by the participants to the community, uh, allow auto correction in case on uh, uh, non voluntary or voluntary uh, incorrect data upload, and uh, also provide for sanctions uh, when uh, uh, incorrect or inappropriate use is made of the information provided to the community. Uh, a kind of sanction may include, for example, the temporary block of the participant to the community. So here we've seen a number of uh, user journeys displaying the relevance of location information, in different uh, concrete use cases and how ELISA can uh, 
support all of these uh, users in uh, facing the challenges and the risks they encounter in these uh, user journeys. But uh, um, which are the main outcomes on which uh, uh, Elise uh, has based uh, these uh, contributions? Uh, Simon, a word uh, back to you for a quick uh, question. Yes, of course. I'm still bothering you with another quiz question here. So when, when talking about the outputs, um, it was mentioned already at the beginning, if you listened carefully. So which are the outputs that first come to your mind when talking about the role of the lease in policy support? Studies, frameworks and solutions, applications, geo knowledge based service, studies, frameworks, pilot solutions, studies, applications, solution, solutions, geo knowledge based service. So do you remember, we already described it at the beginning. So let's have another five to 10 seconds for your answers. Okay, so let's end with the question and share the results. Okay, so obviously you have uh, you've listened to me and I, when I described it at the beginning, uh, Massimo, please. Yeah, that's, uh, it's nice to you to see that uh, our attendees are following us uh, carefully. And in fact, uh, uh, the uh, reply as it was displayed uh, before is, is that Elise contribution ranges uh, uh, over a number of um, uh, artifacts uh, as, uh, uh, with, that we call pillars as displayed before. Uh, Every uh, piece of uh, legislation and policies that we mentioned before is supported by the ELISA action uh, through a number of those pillars. Uh, as you can see here, uh, most of them, uh, such as the EIF, the European Interoperability Framework, uh, the Inspire Directive, the Sustainable Development Goals and the Digital Single Market Strategy, uh, as well as the better regulation toolbox are supported by many different uh, um, uh, pillars of the ELISE action. Let's see more in detail for each of those uh, policies, which are the artifacts uh, proposed by ELISE to provide guidance on uh, uh, their application. Let's start with the European Interoperability Framework. Uh, as uh, we mentioned before, uh, the European Interoperability Framework uh, um, uh, has closed uh, um, uh, links uh, with the location domain. Uh, in particular, um, there's an artifact uh, provided by Elise, which is the European Location Interoperability uh, uh, um, framework blueprint, having those close links uh, with the EIF and is recognized as a domain interoperability framework. Basically, the European Location Interoperability Framework Blueprint or ULF Blueprint uh, represents a, um, a location specific uh, deployment and view of the uh, general interoperability uh, perspective provided by the EIF. Um, actually, and more in general, every output produced by LISE supports at least one of the interoperability layers of the EIF. Uh, for those who do not know the uh, EIF interoperability layers, they are displayed in the figure on the right of this slide. Um, they go from uh, legal interoperability to organizational interoperability, to semantic interoperability, to technical interoperability. This means that interoperability can uh, uh, be uh, seen and actually must be seen under uh, all of these different perspectives in order to uh, reach uh, effective uh, um, implementation. For example, the Inspire Reference Validator has impacts uh, uh, and is related uh, to the uh, 
uh, EAF interoperability levels, uh, in particular to the semantic and the technical layer. Uh, the marine pilot uh, is connected to all of the four uh, levels of interoperability. The EU, uh, EU Gazetteer Evaluation Study uh, is relevant specifically to the semantic aspect of uh, location interoperability. Um, talking again uh, still on the EIF, uh, the EIF uh, has uh, uh, established a EIF toolbox, uh, which is a set of uh, solutions uh, relevant for the uh, implementation of the EIF. Uh, and it's uh, relevant uh, to know that uh, um, several uh, solutions have been uh, considered uh, uh, under the um, uh, EIF toolbox, several ELISA solutions in particular. Uh, the two ones that have official, officially been included in the EIF toolbox are the Inspire registry and the Inspire Register uh, Reference Validator. Uh, the Inspire Registry uh, is based on the registry software developed by the ARENA project, which is a, a predecessor action to ELISE, provides a central access point to a number of centrally managed Inspire registers. Uh, the content of these registers uh, is based on the Inspire Directive, implementing rules and technical guidelines. Uh, the Inspire Reference Validator, in its turn, is a reusable open source tool based on the ETF uh, open source testing framework, which allows data providers, solution providers, and national coordinators to check whether metadata, data sets, and uh, network services meet the requirement defined in the Inspire implementing rules and the related technical guidelines. Uh, we have uh, also, the uh, ULF blueprint, uh, named uh, several times uh, before, which is a guidance framework for using location uh, information in policy and digital public services. This framework is divided into five focus areas, which are policy and strategy alignment, digital government integration, standardization and reuse, return on investment and governance and partnership and capabilities, uh, where, as we have seen before, a current state assessment and the future state vision are outlined and several re concrete recommendations are provided to uh, achieve this uh, target state. The ULF blueprint is also included in the EIF toolbox. There are several other solutions developed uh, uh, by ELISA which are relevant to the EIF uh, implementation, as you can see here. Uh, let's pass to uh, some ELISA insights on the digital single market. Uh, a study in particular has, has dealt with uh, the assessment of economic opportunities and barriers related to geospatial data in the context of the digital single market. Um, the implementation of the digital single market strategy requires the elimination of the main obstacles and barriers to the creation of uh, um, uh, a connected single market. Um, Elisa has dealt in particular with the analysis of barriers to effective use of location information uh, and geospatial data in general in the context of uh, digital single market, as well as uh, with the identification of economic opportunities deriving from the appropriate and uh, full use of uh, location information. Uh, um, Elisa has also provided in uh, this uh, report uh, uh, several recommendations on uh, how to make best use of location information to establish a digital single market, as you can see here. Then a uh, typical domain for Elisa is the support to the Inspire directive implementation. Um, Elise has uh, uh, supported uh, uh, Inspire, uh, providing uh, inputs and help 
to just patient practitioners and the government actors uh, in different thematic policies. As we said before, uh, in the energy domain, as well as in the transportation and the marine sector, as well as in the original environmental domain of the INSPIRE uh, directive. Uh, the contributions named here uh, consist, for example, in uh, a study on the governance of persistent identifiers, which explains how in components of INSPIRE, such as data models can be reused to aid cross-border and cross-sector interoperability uh, in public administrations across Europe, a study on the terms of use applied on, in the INSPIRE resources and uh, their usability barrier, barriers, uh, which provides an overall picture of the data sharing approaches applied as available within the metadata um, provided by the member states and accessible through the Inspire Geo portal. This study highlights the user barriers to data sharing encountered during the analysis as a first step leading to possible solutions to reduce uh, and overcome these barriers. A study uh, on uh, access control uh, for data and services. Um, the study identifies and assesses the current standards and technologies that would help to guarantee secure data exchange between public administrations and also identifies best practices in uh, Europe for data and service sharing and then designs, develops, and deploys a test bed using open source technology based on existing Inspire and SDI components. Finally, a study uh, on uh, Inspire and MMTIS uh, on the overlapping standards related to the delegated regulation uh, 2017 1926. The study identifies and analyzes the overlaps and gaps existing among the relevant standards to be used for the sharing and reuse of data under the remit of the delegated regulation in subject, guiding member states in the implementation of uh, such delegated regulation. Uh, still in the support uh, to the INSPIRE implementation, as we said, uh, the three main pilots in the energy transport marine sector uh, have considered the support that uh, the use uh, of uh, inspire uh, information and the uh, geospatial uh, information and technologies in general can uh, provide in those uh, sectors specific sectors um, the energy pilot in, partic in particular uh, has uh, proposed a number of uh, use cases uh, showing how uh, accurate and interoperable location-based information can lower the barriers uh, faced by the different stakeholders in the government, uh, businesses and citizens uh, groups uh, involved in the energy efficiency policy lifecycle encounter. Um, then in the transport pilot, uh, Elisa stressed the opportunities to support the needs of businesses and citizens uh, and has addressed uh, the policy requirements of the Intelligent Transport Systems Directive uh, while leveraging the uh, investment done in the INSPIRE implementation uh, by the European member states. In the marine uh, sector, uh, the pilot uh, helps to improve the understanding of INSPIRE and the management of the Marine Strategy Framework Directive and uh, uh, the information related, the special related information to in, uh, in this uh, directive. Uh, finally, in the cultural heritage domain, uh, a study uh, developed by Elise has evaluated the feasibility of using existing pan-European gazetteer solutions to satisfy, satisfy users' requirements in terms of lining a location with place names and vice versa. 
Uh, another uh, domain, as we said, is the ELISA's perspective on the better regulation toolbox. As we mentioned before, uh, the um, better regulation toolbox includes uh, several tools, namely, uh, uh, and particularly uh, tool number 727, uh, the so-called ICT assessment tool, uh, presenting a comprehensive array of uh, guidance to assist practitioners in understanding uh, the impact uh, of um, ICT uh, related matters. However, uh, location aspects are not yet incorporated into a better regulation uh, um, ICT assessment tool and process. So uh, Elisa has proposed a um, structured approach uh, to extending the ICT monitoring process with location elements uh, uh, by uh, using uh, selection criteria to identify which are location relevant initiatives, uh, such as the presence of references to location information, uh, data and policies, uh, and uh, um, include this check uh, in this check, involved in this check, staff expert in geospatial matters, it's, uh, using a set of specific questions to measure the relevance of location information in the selection criteria to understand whether a certain policy is relevant from a location perspective and therefore uh, design its uh, development process in under a location perspective. Uh, Elise finally uh, has supported uh, uh, sustainable development goals um, by studying the role of geospatial data uh, in uh, the monitoring and reporting of sustainable development goals. Uh, a webinar has specifically dealt with this. Uh, in this webinar, uh, two increasingly important dimensions have been uh, uh, highlighted. One, the role of uh, uh, new and emerging data ecosystems and partnerships for the provision of data for development. And two, the importance of location intelligence, as we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation in the context of these data ecosystems. This is relevant for all of the sustainable development goals and the monitoring of their achievement. Let's uh, conclude uh, uh, with uh, a session on the key messages and challenges and future outlook for Elise. Uh, Simon, a quick uh, question for you, baby, again. Yes, actually, I will have a quick question for the attendees, uh, actually looking into the future. So as you may be aware, there is uh, another program coming, Digital Europe program. So what have you heard today? So do you think that Elisa can bring experience, experience to the upcoming Digital Europe program? Okay, let's have another two, three seconds. Thank you very much for your answers. So what are the unanimous answer? Yes. We are happy to hear about that. So please, uh, Massimo, what are the final and key messages for the future? Thank you, Simon. And that's a very um, uh, I'm very happy to hear that there's consensus on uh, the fact that Elise um, has uh, a perspective and uh, can uh, provide uh, inputs for the further developments uh, of the digital uh, uh, approach of the European Union in the digital uh, Europe program. Uh, the key messages uh, that we can uh, mention here for uh, um, what we have seen uh, so far that can be reported also for uh, future location-based initiatives are that, first of all, location information plays a key role throughout the entire policy life cycle, as you have seen before. Uh, policy processes uh, are complex uh, and uh, a holistic understanding on how uh, the different uh, phases of so those processes are related to each other 
and how location information is relevant to uh, such different phases is needed. Elise has uh, provided and uh, is still providing tools and guidance for optimal use of location information uh, to policy lifecycle in that uh, holistic framework that uh, we were mentioning before. As we have seen, uh, uh, there are contributions uh, made by Elise uh, for all of the phases of the policy lifecycle. Uh, the EAF toolbox, as we've seen also before, uh, provides a set of tools to promote interoperability at national and European level, and uh, uh, among them, several uh, ELISE uh, solutions have been included, highlighting the relevance of location information under a general uh, interoperability perspective. Um, finally, uh, updated analysis and assessments are necessary to understand how uh, to process location data in the policy life cycle. As we've seen, for example, uh, with the uh, need uh, to incorporate a uh, location element uh, in a better regulation process. Um, some better strategies uh, are needed, uh, in particular um, strategies that give an optimum balance uh, uh, to the digital public service and information require the engagement of different stakeholders we have tried to identify uh, in our user journeys the different stakeholders that may be in, involved in uh, uh, the policy life cycle and uh, in uh, the related strategies. Um, it's necessary to integrate location data sets, but it's also uh, difficult to uh, integrate and link them uh, with uh, uh, other data uh, types. Uh, this difficulty is a significant barrier as uh, low implementation of uh, uh, such integration. Uh, the need to ensure policy accuracy is key. Uh, it is necessary in particular to understand what is relevant uh, to specify in policy documents on uh, location standards and inspire uh, related uh, information, location information in general. Uh, the access to data is a challenge. Uh, access to reliable and sustainable data in the right format uh, is amongst the most common challenges faced by project teams aiming to collect data from various sources. Uh, this is also linked to the fact that uh, uh, public administrations uh, in different countries and within uh, each country itself uh, still work in silos sometimes uh, with uh, uh, different public agencies um, having limited access to location information generated or managed by other agencies which contributes to the difficulty of exploiting necessary location data. Uh, finally, uh, the infrastructure is a challenge per se, in the sense that uh, the um, uh, extensiveness or um, not of the IT infrastructure uh, is a key factor which may complicate the process of data standardization as large amounts of data need to be stored and processed and uh, the infrastructure uh, is uh, appropriate uh, and necessary to support uh, such uh, development. Uh, as uh, Simon was mentioning before, uh, and as uh, you may know, uh, the Digital Europe program is taking the relay of uh, uh, several programs uh, developed by the European Commission so far 
among which the ISA Square program, the interoperability solutions for uh, um, uh, public administrations, uh, citizens, and businesses. Um, the Digital Euro program, in particular, um, targets, uh, among other objectives, the deployment and best use of digital capacities and interoperability. Here we have some key concepts uh, that uh, have been dealt with by Elise. We will talk a bit more on this uh, later. Um, in particular, uh, the Digital uh, Euro program um, underlines the need to support uh, member states in the implementation of the principles of the Berlin Declaration, strengthening the pioneering role of public administrations in driving on value-based digital transformation, uh, support member states in achieving the objectives of their recovery and resilience facility plans that, as you know, are being discussed and approved these days, allowing them to, better, to be better prepared for the challenges and opportunities of uh, their respective digital transitions and uh, promote a coherent ecosystem of cross-border digital services infrastructure and uh, uh, a facilitation of interoperable cross-border and cross-sector solutions in, cross in common frameworks in, in public administrations. Uh, more in detail, um, Elise has uh, uh, provided inputs on which the Digital Europe program can build under several of its uh, pillars. Uh, for example, uh, in the pillar dealing with uh, advanced digital skills, uh, Elise has uh, built a consistent um, geospatial knowledge base that can uh, support the design and delivery of specialized programs and traineeships from future experts in key capacity areas, particularly under the, the location aspect, uh, which is key as we have seen, and also the uh, support to uh, the upskilling of existing workforce through short trainings reflecting the latest developments in key capacity areas. Uh, in relation with the artificial intelligence objective, uh, one key dimension is the setup of a true European data space. And as uh, we have seen before, uh, location information must be uh, a key element of common uh, European data spaces. So to support uh, relevant processes and make best use of artificial intelligence which is, as uh, we have uh, seen from several uh, cases these days, uh, very location intense intelligence uh, under several of its applications. Uh, finally, with the relations, the relation to the uh, uh, wide use of digital technologies across the economy and society, uh, Elise um, provides inputs for the Digital Europe programs, program in relation to its efforts to support European public administrations and industry to deploy and access state-of-the-art digital technologies and build trust in the digital transformation and to support high-impact deployments in the areas of public interests such as smart communities. Um, Elise has dealt uh, with several of uh, those aspects, uh, among which uh, uh, smart communities in particular. So uh, this concludes our presentation and leaves the floor for uh, some questions. If you have any, uh, you can post them in the slide uh, uh, in the um, chat here. Um, Simon? Yes, uh, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Massimo, for guiding us through uh, systematically through the one of the one of the objective areas of Elise. Uh, say it was uh, quite most probably difficult to describe all the out outputs uh, Elise has gathered through one of these uh, 
uh, very rich areas uh, and knowing also the fact that there's the webinars this week, which are three of them, as I mentioned in the beginning, are somehow complementing as well a workshop that has been held uh, two weeks ago during the digital public conference and uh, the, the, this workshop will be published as well. So in the future, you will be able to, to, to have the complete overview of the high level and the detailed overview of uh, ELISA outputs in different areas. And one of these aims was also today uh, to cover the area of supporting uh, different policy initiatives. Uh, I don't see any questions in the chat box. So are there any, before we conclude, any questions regarding today? I think, I, I know, I'm, I'm aware it was a, a lot of stuff presented today. Uh, if this is not the case, if there are not questions, I would suggest that uh, we slowly conclude for today since we are coming to the 75 minutes uh, for, uh, planned for this webinar. And uh, before we conclude, uh, I would invite you for another webinar, as you can see on the next slide, uh, that will take place tomorrow. And it's uh, about the interoperable frameworks and solutions. So the second, the second objective area that uh, has been mentioned as well today. Uh, so very welcome tomorrow at uh, two o'clock. And I would like to thank you everyone. So first of all, Massimo for presenting uh, and of course all the attendees uh, listening today. And before uh, we leave, uh, let's have a look where you can follow us as you can see on the last slides today. Uh, so you can join the ELISA community and join up. So just joining the collection, you can follow us on Twitter on the EU location, or as mentioned already, subscribe to ELISA channel on YouTube. So thank you very much and uh, see you tomorrow.